everyone, Cassius here, welcoming you back to the Shakespeare Minute. Today on the Villains Countdown, we have villain number 12, Queen Margaret from the Henry VI and Richard III plays. Yes, yes, this is another one of those instances where we can probably make our distinction between villain and character who exhibits villainous behavior. Uh, she's not cast as the bad guy in these plays, but the places that she goes in the service of her cause are certainly questionable. Uh, in the Henry VI plays, especially in the third one, mostly we see Queen Margaret pitted against the Yorkists. Uh, this is the Wars of the Roses, where you have the Lancastrians on one side, that's where Queen Margaret is, and the Yorkists, who are trying to uh, take over the throne from the Lancasters. Now, Margaret is married to the Lancaster king, Henry VI, uh, and her son, uh, Edward, Prince of Wales, is set to inherit the throne uh, on Henry the Sixth's death. However, the Duke of York wants to step in and say, no, no, I actually should be king, and he gets Henry to agree that uh, he will name the Duke of York his heir instead of his own son, uh, thus preventing bloodshed from happening now, nothing is to happen right now, but, uh, but the line will switch on his death. Now, like the Queen from Cymbeline, uh, Queen Margaret is having none of this. She wants her son to be the king. So the war rages on because not everybody on the Lancastrian side is willing to go along with the compromise that Henry has agreed to. So they keep fighting, everybody keeps fighting. The Duke of York and his four sons keep fighting, and this is where things get interesting. The Duke of York in the play is depicted as having one very young son who is not yet uh, old enough to be in the battle. So Queen Margaret decides this is something I can work with and has one of her people, uh, Clifford, well, uh, you kill him. Now, being on one side of a conflict where everyone is willing to fight is one thing. But killing the youngest son of your enemy is quite another. However, Margaret does not stop there. No, no, they never do. She needs to lord this over her enemy, and she does in spectacular fashion. Where is thy darling Rutland? Look, York. I stained this napkin with the blood that valiant Clifford with his rapier's point made issue from the bosom of the boy. And if thine eyes can water for his death, I give thee this to dry thy cheeks withal. In one of the very few instances of actual torture in Shakespeare, Queen Margaret berates her enemy and tells him to dry his tears with the handkerchief stained with his youngest son's blood. That's pretty heady, and it shows to what depths she will sink to get her son back in the line of succession. She did not live her entire life as Queen of England just to have all of her contributions and all of her beliefs and her son dishonored like this. So she does what she does and she is awesome while doing it, but it is shockingly terrible to witness. And the Duke of York, no slouch in his own right, breaks before her spectacularly. We're then treated to one of the only two scenes where a woman kills another character on stage in all of Shakespeare. Don't worry, the other one's coming up soon. Queen Margaret's crimes make her such a terrifying figure that even in Richard III, after she's lost everything, uh, while she is no longer uh, villainous, she is terrifying. She is not a figure of pity. Almost anybody else who has lost as much as she has by this point would be a figure of pity, but she isn't. She goes right from terrifying fighter to vengeful angel in no time. She never goes 
through a woman who we need to pity. She's just scary. Uh, and for all of that, I think that Queen Margaret not only is one of Shakespeare's most awesome female characters, but certainly one of his more dynamic villains. And that puts her up here at spot number 12 on the Villains Countdown. Uh, in two days, uh, I'm going to be back with two villains. Uh, so yes, next time we will be doing villains 11 and 10 uh, in two days, jumping into the top 10 villains. It is all crazy villainy from here on out, folks, so get ready. Uh, till two days from now, I'm Cassius. Think of the world. I prithee grieve to make me merry, York. What? Has thy fiery heart so parched thine entrails that not a tear can fall for Rutland's death? Why art thou patient, man? Thou shouldst be mad, and I, to make thee mad, do mock thee thus. Stamp! Rave! And fret! that I may see 